we have a, a significant narrative shift taking place right now. It's been taking place over the last couple of days, but it's been solidified today. Or, well, not quite solidified. I'll talk more about this narrative shift tonight in my regular programming. Uh, uh, the good news, what, what is this Thursday? Good news Thursday night. I'll talk more about that. Uh, tonight. Uh, I really want to get my thoughts together first. But what we're seeing right now is bonds retracing the losses from yesterday, almost 100%. But the market isn't excited about that. In fact, the market is saying, uh, you know what, let's take some profits this morning. But with the bonds going up as much as they're going up, with the oil going down as much as it's going down, and with the narrative shift taking place, I don't think the market stays in the red much longer today. I think we end up in the green and I think we continue with the bull. That's in general. All right. On the other hand, now that inflation is under control and the market believes the yields are not going up and likely down, the focus is going to be switching to the business climate, whether we can sustain one to 2% growth in first quarter. Lots of reports to look at this morning with most showing a weakening economy, but not weak. Tesla is following the NASDAQ in the early going, both a bit down in this profit taking. Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and hit like and subscribe and notify. Okay, I've got Brad Ferguson going to be making big news today uh, around 11, 11.30, something like that, at California time. We've already recorded the session, and uh, I could just tell you that uh, he's got some news on Lathrop. Uh, it's huge. You're going to want to listen do not miss that show. And I will also put a card down for yesterday's show uh, in, in the later going at the end of uh, what we're talking about this morning. Uh, also, um, let's see, uh, you also want to know uh, that the I've, never, I've had the biggest sales ever. So I don't know what's happening with the rest of retail right now. I can tell you that my retail sales went crazy the last couple of days. Uh, I think over 50 units. Uh, I, 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 I lost count. I think over 50 units, lots of those huge orders coming in over Amazon uh, all of a sudden. And uh, just and you guys, too, uh, lots and lots of orders. All the information is down below in the uh, description. Uh, but you, you know the rule. 25 or 1, 45 or 2, 65 or 3. You should have that memorized by now. And uh, you just send the money to uh, paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lower cap letters, indicate whether you're going to want camo or stainless, and if you're outside the country, add 20 bucks uh, for the freight. All right. China's President Xi. This is, this is so much important news. I can't believe how much important news. China's President Xi actually wants improved relationships with the United States. Or maybe it's just kind of a feint. Maybe how, there's no way to know. However, he says that U.S. and China can either be adversaries our partners, and there's no middle ground. China has no interest in wars, either hot or cold, including Taiwan. This is all yesterday in, in his conversations uh, in uh, San Francisco. Um, one could say that this is purely transactional as their economy is in big trouble and they need outside help. They don't want to lose their trading partners. Uh, he also uh, said to Elon Musk specifically that uh, he's thrilled to have him in China. Okay, I'm I'm paraphrasing very broadly there, um, and uh, you know, it, it, all good for uh, all good for the relationship with Elon and with Tesla. So uh, that's huge news. Uh, you know, that's uh, uh, I you know take it take it how you will, uh, but I can't think that it's bad news at least if you can take G at face value, which of course you cannot. All right. So we had the CPI and the PPI this week, which is the thing that is really changing the overall narrative. Uh, reports from other surveys and government agencies that came out this morning might see by comparison. We have lots and lots of potential market movers, not that they're having any effect right now. So let's start with uh, Walmart. Uh, Reuters says that on Thursday, Walmart topped Wall Street's fiscal third quarter earnings estimates, sales rose, Earnings were better than expected, 
but the big box retailer struck a cautious tone with its outlook after it saw consumer spending weaken at the end of October. The last two weeks of October, it said that sales were weak. Again, my Cybertruck bottle openers are doing great. So maybe maybe Walmart's first two weeks of November were better. Anyway, the company shares slid in pre-market trading Thursday after they touched an all-time high the previous day. So Walmart giving a little bit back today. Uh, could that be that they're leading the market? In other words, could Walmart's being down a little bit and worried that the last two weeks of October sales were not great? Could that be why the stocks are down this morning? Or could it be the opposite? Is the sell-off uh, after hitting all times high really profit-taking? So kind of hard to know which way that might be going. Reuters reporting this morning, initial claims, this weekly report every Thursday, initial claims for state unemployment benefits rose 13,000 to 231,000. Uh, and that was higher, a lot higher than the forecasted 220. So that would be some evidence of, of softening. Let's see, there's two pieces of evidence of softening. Now this gets even better or worse, depending on your point of view. The number of people receiving benefits after an initial week of aid, you know, this is the uh, continuing claims report, uh, increased by 32,000 to 1.865 million during the week. Uh, that was also higher than expected. Uh, Market Watch is saying this morning, they say that on imported goods, the cost of imported goods fell 0.8% in October and reversed some of the increase in the prior two months, partially due to oil prices declining because that number is including oil prices. But they, uh, and that's way more, uh, the economists had predicted 0.3% drop. Then you take fuel out of the number and imported prices still declined by 0.2% last month. And I think that's what I said yesterday was what I was expecting or Sunday night. I guess that would have been when I was talking about uh, what I thought might happen on that number. Every evidence would be that import prices should be coming down. Um, also from Market Watch, the Philadelphia Fed said Thursday in its, that its gauge of regional business activity improved slightly to a negative 5.9 in November from a negative nine in the prior month. And any reading below zero indicates deteriorating condition. So uh, this, uh, the economists thought it would be down 7.5. Um, and uh, so actually it was slightly better than economists were projecting, but it's the 16th negative reading in the past 18 months. You combine that with the New York report that we had uh, just yesterday or the day before. So both of those continuing to show softness in the, uh, in the fill the, the in the Fed numbers for those two regions. Uh, now you know those are two regional reports. Remember, um, so the key detail that I took away from this was that the barometer on new orders fell three points, but remained at a positive one point three in November. So new orders was a positive part of this report. All right, um, then we have multiple Fed presidents speaking. And I don't think it's going to affect markets right now. I don't think the I don't think that I don't think there's I think there's a zero chance, which is what the polled economists are saying. There's a zero chance that the Fed is going to increase rates ever, <laughs> ever again. It's just not going to happen. And now part of the new the narrative change is that pretty much all the Fed watchers are saying they are now expecting the Fed to cut aggressively and sooner than we thought. Uh, although most of the actual plotting right now is around April for the first cut. I'm hoping that that will happen much sooner. Uh, Gary Black is out this morning, hoping that it will happen much sooner. Um, okay, here's another one that I'm going to be doing some more study on, and we're gonna, I'm going to do a show on this either tomorrow or on Saturday. I want to do a show on this. Tesla has now, this is from Best in Tesla, uh, you know, my good buddy, Lars Strandritter, who was the co-author on the book, The Elon Musk Mission, he says this morning that Tesla has now confirmed its plans to take on electricity rate retailers in Australia, saying it will seek to combine rooftop solar batteries and NV in EVs and disrupt the business model of traditional incumbents in the utility space. 
There are growing discussions about how best to orchestrate the rooftop solar, household batteries, and EVs to help fill the gap created by the mass exit of Australia's aging coal-fired generators. Tesla thinks it knows how to do this. And as in the car industry, where it has where it had no legacy business to protect, it is not afraid of pushing the boundaries where, where when it thinks it knows where the consumer wants to go. And Lars says, this should be fascinating. And remember, they've already done this in England, the UK. They've already done this in Texas. Um, those are the two that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, and so Elon plans to be a utility. Uh, in these are big markets, the UK, Texas. Uh, Texas is like the ninth biggest economy in the world, um, just, sm just slightly smaller than the UK. Australia, of course, is a huge economy. So... Um, this utility business, I, I'm going to dig into this. I'll probably report on this on Saturday or Sunday. I'm hoping to find some experts. If you're an expert, let me know. If you know an expert, let me know on this whole idea that te Tesla could become a utility. What would the numbers look like? How many dollars could this actually turn out to be? All right. Then we have, uh, uh, um, let's see. This looks to me like a repeat. <laughs> let me go past this. Car and driver. This is another piece of Another narrative issue, but it's not a narrative on the general market. It's a narrative issue with regard to the EV space. And this is another one I'm going to dig into and report on probably tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so I've got that for tomorrow. I think if I can get it together by tomorrow and then the utility thing on Saturday, Car and Driver has bowed the knee to its advertisers again. And its car of the year is a hybrid. The legacy companies have decided hybrids are their Hail Mary. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on this. Are hybrids actually even any better than ICE? Maybe they are. Okay. So should we give them their due? That's what I, one of the things I want to study. I want to take off my EV fanboy hat and I want to say, okay, what's the truth about hybrids? We know one of the one of the things that we know is that hybrids uh, don't get, they they're rarely driven on their batteries they're heavily driven on their motors. Um, so what's the real story? Could they be a significant player? Uh, most people that are in the fanboy category think that this will be transitional and that by 2027 2028 the hybrid will be gone. But all of a sudden, we've got Toyota, General Motors, Ford, Volkswagen, all these companies now pushing hybrids. That's a lot of marketing power. What's going to happen as a result? That's what I want to dig into. All right. So let's. that's all I got in the news category. Let's take a look at where markets are now. So let's start with Tesla. It's moving toward the green. The NASDAQ is moving toward, is now in the green, S&P in the green. So what we got is the Dow down 0.02. So it's moving towards and will soon be in the green. NASDAQ up 0.03, S&P up 0.11. Both, all those are moving positively. Tesla is now down 1.4%. Uh, and the uh, Magnificent Seven are mixed. The Kathy Woods are mostly down, uh, Some a couple up. Uh, but let's turn these into dollar numbers because some people prefer to hear it in dollars. So the Dow Jones is, is down a dollar eighty. <laughs> the Nasdaq is up now six dollars and eighty-two cents. S and P up five dollars and thirty, and the Tesla and Tesla is down three dollars and thirty-seven, exactly where it was in the pre-market. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, let's go on now to the numbers, uh, the rest of the numbers. Okay, now we've got the Dow in the, the positive, uh, and we've got the uh the bitcoin which has been just man if you could time this one you could have made a lot of money the last few days anyway bitcoin down two percent down to 36.7 this morning we have got the dollar steady and high we've got gold at 1790 i'm sorry uh yeah i'm sorry <laughs> gold is down 18 dollars uh, at 1982, but getting close to 2000 again. So gold has been ticking up, ticking up, even as the dollar has been strong, gold has been ticking up. So um, not 100% sure what's going on there. Inflation going down. Uh, what is the safety issue on gold right now that would be pulling people into gold? What's going on there? Copper is down small fraction, 0.07, I'm sorry, up small fraction, uh, 0.05 right now, up 0.05 slightly up this morning, but way, way down at uh, historic lows. 
Uh, oil is down $2.27, $74.39. I think we're going back into the 60s. There was a hard stop around 67.50, I think. So uh, I would look for oil possibly to go and test those levels again, which would be fantastic for inflation. There's almost nothing that could be better than having oil uh, dropping like this for the inflation issue. Now, if it's talking about a horrible economy, that's another story. All right, so we've got bonds uh, down, the 10-year down, um, eight and a half basis points now, almost 100% retracement. I think uh, at the end of the day, it was down 9.9. .9. So we're now down at, whoops, we're now down at 4.453 again. We're sitting there just 20 basis points away from uh, the 4.25, my number. Uh, I We're not going to be there today, uh, but over the next few days, I think we, we start to head towards that 4.25 number. All right. And as always, I always go back and take this quick look again at Tesla. Uh, heading toward the green, down $2.20 now. All right. So we do need to, oh, let me, uh, just a second. So my conversation yesterday with Brad Ferguson, we talked about inflation. We talked about the Fed. We talked about the Tesla Run up over the last last several weeks. We talk about World War Three. <laughs> we talk about how he got into Tesla and what excites him now about Tesla. Remember, he is a, the the guy who came up with this idea for the rebellionaires with the the Teslanaires who uh, couldn't find anybody else that understood their trading idea of being eighty or ninety or one hundred percent in Tesla. And these that's what he does now as as part of his company. Uh, we talked about his expectation for Optimus, and he gave a current valuation for the bot at $3,400 per share. No, no, this is not the eventual valuation. That's what he says that Optimus should be valued right now in the stock market. We should add $3,400 to the $245 or whatever. And that's where, that's where the stock should be right now because of the massive potential for Optimus. But we did disagree on how many are going to be made and and offered to the general public next year. We did not agree on that. So I'm putting a card for that right up here. And then also uh, that you definitely wanna like, subscribe, hit the notify button because uh, I've got another conversation with Bradford today. We are gonna break massive news. I mean, seriously break news that he has not told anybody else yet. So this will be number one exclusive on this channel around 11 o'clock, you can look for that. All right, let's let's uh, let's dig into the most important thing on your mind right now is how many and which style. That's all that I know. You you get up in the middle of the night dreaming, okay, how many, should I buy 10 or should I buy 20? If I buy 20, it's only 20 bucks a piece. I can get it for $400. There's no freight. I mean, holy mackerel. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I know this is what you're thinking about. You can get it in the stainless. You can get it in the camo. It comes in this fabulous magnetic box. I mean, how much better does it get than that? And if you only want three, how much is it? 65. If you only want two, 45. That's 22.50 each. And if you want to buy one, it's $25. Or if you'd rather buy it on Amazon, pay a little more, you know, 29.95. That does not help me at all. I make less on Amazon because Amazon takes their number, takes their dollars. And, you know, all, so anyway, but if you want to buy it on Amazon, if that's easier and for you, then that's another way to do it. Please remember to say whether you want the camo or whether you want the stainless and add $20 if you're outside the country. All right. And then uh, finally, Patreon. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I have not posted on Patreon since Monday. And that's because there hasn't been breaking news in between my morning show and my evening show that was important enough. I don't want to fill up your email with stuff that doesn't matter. So please understand if you don't, some day, I've had days when I put up three items. I've had days when I put up five items. I've had days when I put up one item, but the last Tuesday, Wednesday, nothing because there just wasn't anything breaking. If you'd like to be part of that though, and if you'd just like to support the channel, remember it's kind of like tipping at the restaurant, you know? Uh, did you get good service? Did you get something of value? If you're getting something of value from this show, $5 a month, you get in at that level and you get one free audiobook. The $10 level, you get two free audiobooks. Or at the $10 level, you can have your choice of a 
of one of these amazing bottle opener and refrigerator magnets. And you know you want it. <laughs> okay, one last time. We always have to do this because Tesla was moving up. No, nope, it's just doing this now. It's moving around. Uh, uh, it's, it, it doesn't know whether it wants to be down a dollar or once it went down $4. Uh, but I think uh, the, the rest of the market is headed toward the green. So I, I'm pretty sure that's where Tesla's going. There is no news right now that would cause Tesla to go down. So this is profit taking in my humble opinion. It has been great talking to you.